So when did it fall out of use completely? When was it shut down? It, it actually shut down 14 years ago yesterday. So it's been yeah. vacated for 14 years. Right. Um, the bingo hall, which where we are now, this closed. 1997, so this had been closed for three years. Yeah. And the cinemas above were still operating. But that particular area here, this, this fire tower, hasn't really been in use, proper use, since 1968. Yeah, I was going to say. Okay. So all of this was done afterwards, wasn't it? Suspended yeah. savings put in and everything converted to different use completely. That's right. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's numerous pillars in here, <laughs> and, the, and the best way to get an idea of how the conversion work was done is that all the pillars that are orange or whatever what colour you want to call it, mm -hmm. are the added pillars. The original pillars are the ones that are green to the back of the back of the stalls. Right, okay. Okay. Okay? okay. Yep. What was the original date of the building? The original what, sorry? The original date of the building when it was very first built. It's 1930, Golden New Victoria. Right. Yeah. And um, it was a th theatre with three and a half thousand seats and there was also a ballroom there. Have you through there? Step back a bit, George, you'll see it there. See, that's the original circle. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, running across. And is that all still in there? Pretty much, yeah. So, basically, what you've got is a box built inside the original building. Mm -hmm. surviving restaurant ceiling with all this right. plaster work and what have you. We'll be able to see a bit of that through, yeah, through there. there. Just go through here. Um, and over on the, the far wall, uh, the original windows still survived. They were just infilled yeah. with, uh, with wood. It's, it's quite surprising what remains. And, I mean, this building's full of hidden surprises, and that's the original um, Stalls Lounge ceiling. Oh, yeah. yeah. So there's lots of examples of that throughout the building. Good. Um. There's no denying it looks a bit of a state at the moment. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, <laughs> a, that's an understatement. <laughs> but it's, it's just trying to see, obviously, behind that and what the space that it is and what it can be. So you've got to try and imagine this 1960s conversion being stripped out um, and then you're going to be left with uh, a damaged shell of yeah. the, 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 the 1930s theatre and then you work from that. Mm -hmm. When you see it George as an expert, you know, is it doable, do you feel there's, there's potential? I think there's potential in any building. Okay. It's, 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 you know, it's 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 a, it's a, exactly. It's, a, yeah. it's only a building that's on its complete last legs. That's completely structural and sound. That you've got to take a slightly different view on it. But even then, you know, any, nearly any building can be restored. It's about finding a really good, viable option for it to be restored. There's no point in just restoring a building for restoration's sake. Yeah. It's got to have a proper use to it. It's got to have a viable use. Otherwise, in 30 years, time it'll be in the same condition again. Absolutely. So it's, it's the same with all the stuff we've done restoration, man. I mean, one of the main reasons why most of them get converted from any other use to residential is because that's the biggest need at the minute, yeah. you know, residential use. Yeah. And it makes it viable because you're buying something for 100 grand and you know that when you turn it into a house, it's going to be yeah. worth 400 grand. Yeah. Is there any more putting the cost together already? Has yeah. Been, yeah. How much? About 18 million. Okay. What's the view of it in the city generally, in terms of the building, in terms of what people think of it? People want this building to be saved. Um, for example, in 2007, we organised an event called Hug the Audium. And we were expecting a few hundred people to come down and stand between the towers. We ended up getting about a thousand people. We actually managed to encircle the entire perimeter of the site. Everybody holding hands. Right. 
Yeah, that's, that's yeah. good. What's the council view on it? Uh, we'd like to see something done with this. Uh, I think that that's the main thing. What you mean, retain it and do something with it rather than do all of it? Rather than do all of it, yeah. I think that, that that's the yeah, preferred option. Oh, I don't want a grid space, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. That's huge, isn't it? Well, well this was um, known as Audion 2, and the capacity of this cinema was 1,200. It's massive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, it's, it's really just a section of the building. Yeah. Yeah, it's roughly like two thirds of the, um, <laughs> the, 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 the span of the auditorium. That's a wall film, What film was that? Has anyone worked it out? It's a manual fire. George, just keep holding this guy closer to you. Let's try and sign you with the stuff. Oh, That's massive. Absolutely enormous. That wall is just an divided wall, but no, this isn't basically the other side. They don't do them this size anymore. They really don't. Well, that's good. Yeah. I'm not quite. Is that, is that the middle or not? Is that the end wall? Oh, that's the smaller one. Two I was going to say, it feels like it's. Oh, right, I see. You can see, when we get to the next uh, screen, you'll see you've got the curve there. Right. And you've got a straight, straight cut there. Yes. And when we go to the other side, you'll see the corresponding uh, difference. It's got a region for the, yeah, it's, you know, the catchment area is, is quite That's huge. The, the, the size of venue that it would be uh, competing against would be Sheffield, yeah. probably Manchester Apollo. Yeah. Um, you know, you're talking about 3,500, 4,000, fully you know, standing yeah. in the stalls. Yeah. So yeah. it's. Mm -hmm. It's a venue that would work, because that's one of the bone contentions we've got around here. If we want to go and see live music, if it doesn't come to Leeds, um, we've had to go to Manchester, we've had to go to Sheffield, Sheffield. Newcastle. Now, the added we thing is... We don't want to go to Newcastle. We don't want to go to Newcastle. <laughs> <laughs> we've got Leeds Arena now, which kind of... It takes up some of the slack. Yeah, yeah. but it... It also validates the need for a mid-sized venue in this region as well. Because the arena is, I, I don't know what the capacity is as an arena. 10,000? 10, 10, I think so, yeah. You know, so you've got a band that, that'll do 10,000, but they're, they're not going to play 3,500. Yeah. You know, so um, it's a good slot to fill. And it's, so it's not too big. It's, you know, it's, you, you've got the relative intimacy that you, that you get in a theatre show. Playing complete devil's advocate, then, if that's the case, why hasn't it been done? Well, there's been the financial problems. Yeah. Uh, there's also was, been the political will. There's been a lot of politics surrounding this building. Okay. It's only recently, very, very recently, uh, come into the hands of the council. There's a lot of money, but there's a lot of money out there as well. There's a lot of grants to be had and a lot of funding streams to be had. From a heritage point of view, from a regeneration point of view, for, certainly from an arts funding point of view, even though yeah. budgets are being cut left, right, and centre, there's still, there still some money out there. Yeah, so yeah. we seem to be moving some of the funding further north, don't they? Recently, they've, they've cut some of the funding yeah. from central London. Yeah, but there's European funding. There's all sorts out there. Mm. Mm. So you've just got to make a point of it. If none of the bids convince the council, um, then the council will, shall we say, market the building again, but as a redevelopment site, because they gave priority to refurbishment options to start with. So if anybody wanted to, shall we say, put a multi-storey car park on this site, they had to be prepared to do it inside the existing building. That was, that was what the council was saying. So we're crossing our fingers very tightly and hoping that, you know. Is any of it listed? The building, no. None of it? No. It's, um, as, as Mike said, it's in, a it's in a conservation area and it's protected to a degree. 
And it also helps that we've got the Alhambra Bank next door and there's this relationship between the domes. Mm -hmm. um, that seems to have held a lot of weight with English heritage in the past. So. But they haven't listed the domes? Um, no. Oh, okay. And again, there's been, shall we say, political things going on there as well. Um, there's been, shall we say, inconsistencies in the listing um, procedures and what have you. Um, right. They seem, but that's that's all ancient history now. It's been, it's been, a, it's been a long, hard slog. Well, also, Yorkshire Forward did apply for an immunity certificate because people were putting in listing applications, and I'm not quite sure how that works because Yorkshire Forward don't exist anymore. Mm. But, York, but English Heritage have got the certificate. Which, is it 14 so, years? It's not. No, 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 it's not that long. Is it's, it not? I, from what I understood, uh, from one of the things I've seen, it possibly runs out at the end of 2015. Okay. Have you seen photographs of Poland? Uh, I think I have. Yeah. Well, yes, I have. I have, yeah. So there are three big, three big ones. Is there three or four? Four. four? I think there could be four. One, two. Yeah. I'm not entirely sure. I mean, it would make sense if there's another one actually. We are going to take this before. suspended ceiling out over the next few weeks. Just yeah, it'd be great to see hopefully that. Hopefully, open that right. See what's right through. In. Yeah. These were originally mirrored in Yeah. And the, that breeze block there, there was a connecting staircase down to the restaurant. Yeah, uh, which is pretty much still there, apart from the, the timber lower half. How far does it go back that way then? It goes right as far back as the, as the, as the remainder of the building. Yeah, that's a false wall, is that a, a divided wall? Well, so when you were inside the ballroom, you were inside the ballroom as well? Yeah, that's a through. Right, okay. Yeah, so I can that picture. Right. Where are we? Yeah, Josh, there's, um, you can see the window of the towers. Oh, right, okay. So, well, I would... We've just walked, I see, yeah, yeah. I've got it. And that's what Mike was talking about, the staircase that's, that was breeze blocked up. That connected both restaurant and ballroom. Yeah. Great space, that, isn't it? Mm hmm. Slightly lower section of the, uh, the the roof, the ceiling came down to a lower section yeah. to to make it into a uh, suspended ceiling. Hell of it. Well, I mean, in a lot of ways, it looks like the conversion work was done quite crudely, and you could say it was cheap. It was just breeze blocks. Yeah, it would be. But the great thing about that is, is that in, in terms of removing it and re reversing it, it's not going to be that expensive. What was, it's going to be a hell of a job, a hell of a task, it's going to be an amazing story. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir.